Hi, I'm Dr. Rashid Buttar. The first thing I'd like to say is that for those of you that have sent us um, emails, called us, uh, sent us prayers and intention and, and well wishes, we sincerely appreciate that and that means a lot to us. And what I'm about to do right now is more for you than for anybody else. Um, and it's also to set the record straight. Um, there are many things that happen in one's life and um, you don't know how to sometimes respond to some of those things, but injustices occur every day. Uh, my father taught me a long time ago that the only thing that matters is if you can look in the mirror and the person that's looking back at you in the mirror is proud of who they are and is uh, not uh, ashamed of uh, who's looking back at them. And that's how I've tried to live my life. And those of you that know me or those of you that have been my patients or my friends, um, you, know, you know what the truth is. And really that's the only thing that matters to me. But um, there is another there is another facet to this and I and I want to tell I want to tell that story because there's certain things that um, some of us might, may not really truly appreciate so let me give you an example of what I'm talking about when an attorney makes a mistake uh, it may end up costing the client that contract or maybe even um, unjustly putting somebody in jail if an accountant makes a mistake it's a it's a financial loss if a, if a mechanic makes a mistake, it's a loss of that uh, car and time and, and maybe some money. But when a doctor makes a mistake, that mistake is counted in body bags. People lose their lives. And that type of mistake is happening in medicine constantly. And anybody who goes out there and points that type of mistake out and points out the inadequacies and the mediocrity and the incompetence in the medical profession of which I'm sometimes ashamed of admitting that I'm in, they become ostracized. They become the bad guys because they're supposed to be part of the good old boy network and yet they're going out and saying things that affect the good old boy network, the medical network in a negative manner. Well, I'm here to tell you that I was trained conventionally. I started a general surgery program and I became a doctor because I wanted to help people. I've tried to leave the profession three different times because I was not happy with what I was doing in the medical profession. I wasn't happy with prescribing a drug to cover up a symptom that would end up only further perpetuating the, the agony or the, the problem that the person was having. We were never solving the problem at its source. We were always dealing with the problem based upon a symptom. If you have a car and the car has a knocking sound in the engine, you don't turn up the radio, you don't cover up your ears with earmuffs trying to prevent hearing that sound, you do something to figure out what's causing that sound in the engine. If you have a red light that goes on your dashboard, you don't take out the fuse so that red light doesn't flash anymore. You try to figure out why is that red light coming on in the first place and you solve the problem at its source. If any mechanic were to say, hey, just take out the fuse with that red bulb or here, turn up the radio so you don't hear that knocking in the engine, what would you as a person that went to that mechanic say to that mechanic? I'm certain that you'd say that the person was an imbecile and didn't know what the hell they were doing. But in medicine, that's exactly what we do. We cover up the symptom. When our engine has a light that's blinking and giving us a symptom, we as doctors are supposed to figure out what the cause is, and we don't. We don't because we are trained to take a drug and prescribe that drug to get rid of the symptom, to mask the symptom. Guess what? The problem is still there. But the only problem is that when you actually mask a symptom, that problem will now perpetuate and get worse. And then you give a second drug to mask that symptom until finally the person ends up getting a chronic disease, a terminal disease that now that person needs to be on that drug forever. Cancer, heart disease, uh, neurodegenerative disease, stroke, all these pathologies have a common ideology, a common cause. Now I'm kind of getting off the point so I'm not going to go into all this. There are many, many resources available to you. You can go to themedicalseries.com and get DVDs that actually explain all this and my philosophy in painful detail. We have well over 24 hours of video documentation of philosophy, of, of theory, of science, and then actually showing that when you take this philosophy and this theory and this science and you put it together, what the results that are possible, the possible results of taking stage four cancer patients and they're still alive today, five years after they were told they were gonna die. Are we successful in 100% of the patients? Absolutely not. We have a long way to go before we get to that point. But we are certainly more effective and we are certainly more superior than our counterparts in conventional medicine. That I would put my money on and I can prove it. I don't even have to prove it because it's already video documented. So why am I sitting here talking to you about this? Because I want you to know what the truth is. The medical board in North Carolina has been coming after me for well over nine years now. 
We have documentation of this, and each time that they have tried to come after me, it's been absolutely based on ludicrous things such as, um, in fact, they've never even had a complaint before. In 18 years of practicing medicine, I've never had a formal complaint against me to the North Carolina Medical Board, to any medical board for that matter. I've never had a malpractice a lawsuit, never even been named in a malpractice lawsuit. Now, the medical board, after their last event, last uh, effort at trying to come after me, have made some pretty serious accusations. So before I go into those accusations and our response, I just want to take the time and give you a little bit of background.